Hello and welcome to another video here at Hobbies and Happiness. My name is Dan. And I'm Jim. And today we're going to teach you how to play the Final Fantasy trading card game. The Final Fantasy trading card game, often abbreviated as FFTCG, was originally released in Japan in 2011. The first iteration of the game was never released outside Japan and was discontinued in order to make way for the second iteration of the game known as the Opus series. This iteration was released worldwide in October of 2016. In this TCG, players build a deck of 50 cards with characters from the storied history of the Final Fantasy franchise. Oh, and by the way, Dan, my favorite character is Shantoto from Final Fantasy XI because she's one of the most powerful casters of my favorite race, Taru Taru. The first player to deal seven damage to their opponent wins the match. There are actually three ways to win a game of FFTCG. The most common form of winning a match is, like Jim mentioned, be the first player to deal seven points of damage to your opponent. We'll go over damage and combat later on in the video. Another way to win is to have your opponent attempt to draw a card from their deck while their deck is empty. This is commonly referred to as many other card games as milling your opponent. The third way to win a game is to deal damage to your opponent while their deck is empty. Now, I don't know if you know this, Dan. There's actually another secret win condition. Oh, oh yeah? W what's that, Jim? It's probably my favorite one of all. Make your opponent scoop. So I win, right? One of the most fundamental and foundational elements of any card game is its resource system. Players play cards by spending what are known as crystal points or CP. Crystal points are generated in one of two ways. You can dole a backup card or you can discard a card from your hand. By doling a backup card. You mean tapping it, right? No, no, I, I mean doling it. So tapping it. Okay, so this mechanic is commonly referred to as tapping a card in games like Magic the Gathering. It's just rotating the card 90 degrees. Doling a backup card will generate one CP of the element of the card. Discarding a card from hand will generate two CP of a single element of that card. There are actually cards in the game that have multiple elements on a single card. So if you were to discard a multi-element card from your hand for CP, you would choose which element you are generating the CP for, as it is two CP of a single element. Additionally, when paying for multi-element cards, you must use one element of each element on that card. Now, one important thing to remember when paying the CP cost for your cards is at least one element from the card you're wanting to play must be paid for with at least one CP of that element. For example, if you're wanting to play a two cost red card, at least one CP that you generate must be from the red or fire element. This leads us into the different elements that you will encounter in the Final Fantasy TCG. You got fire, ice, wind, earth, lightning, and water. And hard. Go play! <laughs> With these powers, <laughs> all right, it's not that. <laughs> the element of fire specializes in dealing damage to forwards with strong spells. Fire characters trade protection for firepower. Firepower. By dulling your opponent's characters or making them discard their hand, Ice excels in wearing down your opponents over time. Now, Ice is definitely up Jim's alley. Oh yeah, you're not <laughs> wrong, Dan. <laughs> Focusing on speed and featuring a lot of cards with low cost to play, Wind excels in swift and nimble plays by bypassing your opponent's blocks and by wearing down their deck. The element of Wind has many ways to activate your cards or resource manipulation. It's also green, so we know this is something right up Dan's alley. Yeah, you're definitely not wrong. Wind is pretty sweet. The next element is Earth. With a lot of tough forwards that specialize in defense, Earth excels in soaking up damage and getting stronger over time. The element of water is used to draw more cards, play around card combinations, or return your opponent's characters to their hand. Water excels in progressively building an advantage over your opponent. Lightning is an exciting element that excels in taking out forwards with one-hit moves. It also specializes, like wind, in quick and nimble attacks. There are actually two other elements to mention, and those are the elements of light and dark. Light and dark cards are powerful and can be played using the CP of any element. However, 
There can only be one character of either affiliation on your field at any time. Light and dark cards don't generate CP when discarded either, so be careful not to include too many in your deck. There are four card types in the Final Fantasy TCG. You have forwards, backups, summons, and monsters. Forwards are the cards which are going to be dealing damage and blocking your opponent's forwards. Backups are cards which are doled for crystal points or other special abilities. Summons are cards that can be used for single use effects, so think instants or sorceries and magic the gathering. And monsters are cards which sit on the field and provide additional abilities for players. So think artifacts and enchantments and magic. At the top of each card, you have the cost and element of the card along with the card name. Then below the card art, we have the card type, whether it's a forward, backup, summon, or monster, the job, and then the category. The job of each card can also be thought of as a card subtype, and the category of each card is what Final Fantasy game the character appears in. Below this area is the card's text, which describes what the card does along with additional card abilities. The number below that is the power of the card if it's a forward. One thing to keep in mind about the power of the forward is that the number is both its offense and defense value. So again, Going back to magic analogy, if you have a card with the power of 9,000, that would equal to 9,000 power and also 9,000 toughness in magic. The last thing you should know about the cards are the different types of abilities. You have what are known as action abilities, which are written in a cost effect syntax. This means in order to use the ability, there's a certain cost to pay or game action to take. You also have field abilities, Field abilities are essentially static abilities provided by some cards that are always on. You have what are called auto abilities, which are typically referred to as triggered abilities. Auto abilities automatically go off or trigger when specific game conditions are met. The last type of ability are what are called special abilities. These abilities can be denoted by an orange S icon in the card text. In order to activate these S abilities, you must discard a card with the same name, but not necessarily the same card number. Each card in the Final Fantasy TCG has a specific card or serial number denoting the set it's from, along with the rarity of that card. Speaking of rarities, there are four card rarities in this game. They are Common, Rare, Hero, and Legend at the highest rarity level. Now, to begin a game, players draw a starting hand of five cards from their deck. It should be mentioned that one full mulligan is allowed. So if you don't like your first starting hand of cards, you can put those five cards on the bottom of your deck and draw five new cards. Each turn starts with the active phase where the turn player activates their cards or turns their sideways cards face up, unless there are certain game effects preventing them from doing so. Next is a draw phase where the turn player draws two cards from their deck. The exception to this is that the first player draws only one card on the first turn of the game. After drawing your cards for the turn, play proceeds to the first main phase. During this phase, players may play characters onto the field, like forwards and backups, use special abilities, and cast summons. Some things to note are that forwards and monsters enter the field active and backups enter the field dull. So they can't be dulled for resources on the turn they enter the field. Additionally, Forwards have summoning sickness, which means they can't attack or be doled for abilities the same turn they enter the field, unless they have a special keyword called haste. Another thing to note is that summons can actually be played at instant speed, meaning they can be played anytime you have priority, so you can even play summons on your opponent's turn. Yeah, Dan, it turns out an ability to play at instant speed it's pretty powerful. After your first main phase is the combat or attack phase. This is the phase that players get to use their forwards to attack their opponent. Now to do this, you must choose an active forward that is able to attack, dull that forward and declare the forward as an attacker. At this point, the defending player gets to choose whether or not they will use one of their forwards to block. Now remember that in order to block, forwards must be active. It should be noted that there is what is known as a party attack, 
where you essentially stack at least two forwards with the same element together to form a party. When party attacking, you total up the forward's power and both forwards essentially become one unit during combat. There is no party blocking, however. Only a single forward can attempt to block an incoming party attack. Once attackers and blockers are declared, you move to the damage resolution step. If the forward is blocked, you compare the power of both forwards and the forward with the higher power stays on the field, while the other forward is broken and heads to the break zone, or graveyard. If both forwards have the same power, then they both trade with each other and are both broken. If the attack is not blocked, then the attacking forward deals one point of damage to the opposing player, and the defending player places the top card of their deck into the damage zone. Remember, the first player to deal seven points of damage to their opponent wins the game. When the defending player receives damage and reveals that top card of their deck, if the card is marked with an EX icon in the top right corner, the player may choose to trigger the card's EX burst ability and may immediately apply the EX burst effect. Now, EX burst is optional, but when it is triggered, it is important to note that summons or abilities cannot be used in response by either player and the effect is immediately resolved. Now, the attacking player may choose to attack with another eligible forward if they want to. Attacking in the Final Fantasy TCG is done one forward or party at a time until the attacking player chooses to be done. Now, once complete, play then moves on to the second main phase. This main phase is identical to the first main phase where the turn player can play more characters to the field if they so choose. Once you've played all the cards you want during main phase two, next is the end phase. During this phase, all damage dealt to forwards is cleared until end of turn effects are ended and the turn player's hand is checked. There is a hand limit of five cards, so if you have more than five cards in your hand at this time, you must discard down until you have five cards. A few final things that we wanted to be sure to mention before we wrapped up. Deck sizes are 50 cards with no more than three copies of a single card allowed in a deck. There's also a rule where you may only have one copy of a certain card name on your field at one time, unless that card has this multi-symbol. Now, this is similar to the Legend Rule in Magic the Gathering, so you can only have one character on your field named Cloud, for instance, at any one time. Additionally, you may only have five backups on your field at any time, so be sure to watch out for that. And that should be everything you need to know to get started playing the Final Fantasy trading card game. There's a few other more advanced and in-depth rules which we hope to touch on in future content. Be sure to check the description for links to some great resources to get you more information on the game. There's a great site called ffdex.com where you can find a lot of great links to other great content surrounding the game as well as meta-analysis and a lot of good deck lists to check out. Don't forget to like this video and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more card game content. Thanks for checking out this video and stay tuned to the channel for more content around the Final Fantasy trading card game. Take care.